Nadia Bilchik is a television news anchor, keynote speaker, author, trainer, and communications consultant. 19 number one best-selling have been nominated and won so many awards throughout your careers. She has a wealth of experience interviewing and consulting with well-renowned figures, celebrities, and corporations. Nadia speaks on how to get people to like you, trust you, and want to do business with you. Over the last few weeks, the entire world has been monitoring the treatment of your grandfather, Nelson Mandela. And my job was to introduce it and provide... With topics like leveraging the power of your personal presence, networking for success, and lighting the fire. Nadia Bilchik. Well, a very good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And I'm so delighted to invite you to join me today as Nadia speaks about personal branding. And I get asked about this all the time. People want to know, what is personal branding really? Is it just a cliche, a catchword, something that became popular, but what does it really mean? So why I'm excited to make this my topic today is I've decided to kick my podcasts or my video casts or my lives up a notch. And I have actually hired a wonderful producer. So I'm going to ask Alan to introduce himself because Alan and I are now partnering in making sure that we take these live interactions up a level. So Alan, please join us to say hi. Hi, hi Alan. Alan. Hello. <laughs> Alan, so, so why I'm so delighted to have you here is I have been doing live interviews and podcasts for the last two years. And part of my brand is to say, how can I learn new things and how can I kick it up a notch? So, Alan, a warm welcome to my audience. And you're here helping us take these interactions to a whole new level. Oh, thank you, Nadia. And hello, everyone. And yeah, it's, I'm super excited to be working with you. And we're taking up a notch yeah, with some just a little bit more production value and just making things smooth and reaching as many people as we can. And I just like uh, being the person podcasters and content creators can lean on. So I'm excited. And to Alan, here. you and I discussed in detail what this iteration of Nadia Speaks should be. And I said to you, right, Alan, that I get asked a lot of questions. I get asked about, do I get nervous? So we're going to do a whole, 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 whole episode on that. But today, Alan, what we're going to focus on is the concept of personal branding. And so many people, Alan, talk about personal branding and think it's a magical, mystical thing. So today, in episode one of our pilot of Nadia Speaks, I'm going to decode it. And, and what I say, Alan, is whether you are an employee whether you are like you are, an entrepreneur, whether you're an executive, a manager, whatever phase of your career you're at, everybody does have to understand the concept of personal branding and not be intimidated by it. So first thing, Alan, you're going to bring up my slide, which is don't be on autopilot. That's key. Take yourself off autopilot. So what has happened specifically during the last two years? We're just dealing. We're dealing with what we call VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And the first step towards understanding your brand is to be conscious and intentional. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to maximize every opportunity. Every opportunity you have to connect with another individual, be they an internal customer, client, if you're at the Home Depot, an associate, if you are an entrepreneur, your customer or client, if you are a doctor, your patient. But the idea behind understanding your personal brand is to maximize every opportunity so that you can maximize your impact. So why are you here? Why are you joining me today? Because everybody wants to maximize their impact. So let's take a step back and think about the concept of a brand for a product. What is a brand for a product? So when you think about well-known brands, what words, what images come to mind? So if you think about anything that's in your possession right now, be it your Apple or your Android, or if you're wearing Nike shoes or a T-shirt, what words, images, experiences come to mind when you think about a well-known brand? I had the great pleasure 
earlier this week, speaking to a group of innovators from Chick-fil-A. What comes to mind when you think Chick-fil-A? Well, when I say to people, what is the number one fast food chain? People always say Chick-fil-A because what comes to mind when you think Chick-fil-A is you think service, you think it's a pleasure, you think delicious fresh food. So what comes to mind when you think of a well-known brand? Now, in the same way that a plethora of images and experiences comes to mind when we think about well-known brands, well, I assure you that if I have to mention your name, be it Alan, my podcast producer, or any single one of you to someone who you work with, a whole plethora of images and experiences, words come to mind. So, Alan, we do have a slide, and it is a quote by Jeff Bezos that says, a brand for a company or a product is like a reputation for a person. So very simply put, what is your brand? It is your reputation. Not more complex than that. It's what comes to mind when people think about you. So I'm going to ask you to take a moment and think about how do you want to be perceived? How do you want to show up in the minds of the people you impact? Big brands spend millions and millions of dollars thinking about how they want to show up in the minds of their consumer. And I'm suggesting to you in this process of personal branding that you start to think about how do you want to show up in the minds of your audience, your customers, your colleagues, your employees, whoever you are. So I had a wonderful conversation yesterday with somebody who is in the building industry, very, very accomplished person in the building industry. And she said, Nadia, I don't feel that I have communicated my brand well enough. And what did she really mean? What she meant is I'm not well known enough for the things I'm good at. So I'm saying to each and every one of you, the concept of a personal brand, I don't want it to be a cliche for you. I don't want it to be something that's bandied about and you go, is there some secret that I don't know about? It's as simple as saying, how do I want to show up in the minds of the people I impact? Where there isn't simplicity is for a product or for a company, you can have a certain logo. You can have a tagline. So let's take Home Depot. Home Depot's tagline used to be more saving, more doing. Well, Home Depot changed it to where doers get more done or Coca-Cola tastes the feeling. Whatever it is, the difference is that you can't develop a tagline. You as an individual, as an employee, as a manager, as an entrepreneur, Ellen, who is producing my podcast today, cannot walk around with a t-shirt that says, hello, I'm Alan, and yes, I am great to work with. He can have a t-shirt that says that, but if he doesn't provide the experience to reinforce his strengths and capabilities, it doesn't matter how great the t-shirt is. It doesn't matter how great the logo is. So I think and I hope I do have a slide that says, are you providing the actions to reinforce Think about this. Are you providing the actions that reinforce how you want to be perceived? That's step number two, right? Do my actions align with how I want to be perceived? So step one in the process is how do I want to show up? Step two is do my actions align? So here, if you have just joined us, I'm Nadia Vilcek. And Nadia is speaking today, or Nadia speaks today about the concept of personal branding. Decoded, demystified, it's not that complex. It's a matter of saying, if I want to show up in a certain way, what experiences am I providing to be seen in that way? So the lovely woman that I spoke to yesterday who is in property development wants to be seen as a thought leader. So. My question to her is, what experiences are you providing to be seen in that way? And we agreed she needs to start providing content that says, here are things every developer should know. You can't 
have a brand that is not experienced moment by moment, interaction by interaction. Another story that I have for you today is one of my colleagues at CNN asked if I would provide some reference. And he is one of those people who the way he wants to be seen as a subject matter expert, as a team player, as a great resource, he does reinforce those strengths and capabilities with action. So it was very easy to recommend him because the way he wants to be seen and the experiences he provides are congruent. They are in harmony with each other. So often I speak to individuals and I go, okay, how do you want to show up in the minds of the people you impact? And they'll go, I want to be seen as caring. I want to be seen as an accessible leader. I want to be seen as a subject matter expert. I want to be seen as, and then they realize there's a gap between how I want to be seen and the experiences I am providing. So that brings us to the second point of this. Once you've understood how you want to be seen, and what experiences you're providing to reinforce that. The next question is, what happens when somebody behaves in a certain way or sends me an angry or rude email or provokes in me a reaction that is not congruent with, in harmony with the overall way I want to be perceived? And that's where the power of your personal brand comes in. That's when you, as an individual, makes a decision, how do I want to show up? So very simple example, colleague, client, customer gets angry. You make a decision and you pause and you say, is the way I am about to respond to this in harmony with the overall way I want to be perceived, which gives you as the individual the power. So at this point, I'm going to bring Alan, my podcast producer, back in. Alan, thank you once again for joining us. Alan, I know we have lots of comments and questions coming in, but I'd like to know from you. When you think about dealing with difficult situations and dealing with conflict, do you think of yourself as somebody who stays true to the overall way you want to be perceived? I, I do. I like to think I do. And I, I always try to be the cool, calm and collected individual in the room. And that's maybe why I produce podcasts. And I like sitting behind the glass <laughs> as we at radio, um, because I like to be that person that people can rely on to be steady and steadfast in who they are. And that's kind of what I am when, when I'm reaching out to new hosts. And that's what I sell myself as for our personal brand, for our podcast company, my wife and I run. So I want to ask you this. Have you ever had an experience where you've watched somebody else lose it? Because, you know, years of breaking news in the CNN newsroom, I've occasionally seen somebody, and it can happen. I remember when there was a terrible terrorist attack in Spain, and the director, I mean, there was just so much going on, and he was screaming and shouting and really. And one of the things I'd had a conversation with him about earlier was, how do you want to show up in the minds of the people you impact? And he said, oh, I want to be seen as the Sully Sullenberger of television. You know, Sully Sullenberger, he landed U.S. Airways so calmly that U.S. Air flights calmly into the Hudson. He said, I want to be seen as that. But his behavior, the way he was behaving in that moment was not congruent with the overall way he wanted to be perceived. And that's where your power lies in constantly and consistently being in control. And that's why going back to that slide of taking yourself off autopilot, right? Mm -hmm. Because autopilot means I just react. <laughs> Whereas when you are mindful and conscious and aware of overall how I want to be perceived, you then behave in a way that is in harmony with that, right? Absolutely. So, taking yourself off autopilot. I know, also have a slide about your impact, and I want you to think about the impact you have. So why are you joining us today? 
I spoke about personal branding and we're talking about it on a personal level. Does your behavior reinforce the overall way you want to be perceived, right? Because at the end of the day, we want to enhance the overall impact we have on each and every individual we interact with. Now, as you're listening to us and as you've joined Nadia speaking about personal branding, I hope it's making you think about all of your behavior. And could you, I love what the Emerald, the chef Emerald says, just before he adds flavor to food and before he says, bam, he says, let's kick it up a notch. And that's why we're here today. I'm going back to what is a brand and Jeff Bezos said it so well. A brand for a company or a product is like a reputation for a person. And the reality is you are being branded whether you are actively involved in the process or not. Now, if you've joined us and you're in a leadership position, what is your brand? Your brand is how the people you manage, how the people you lead, how you show up in their minds. So a brand is your reputation. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. It's a lasting impression. It's your overall presence. And there are many factors that contribute to this. If you're a thought leader, or an entrepreneur, and you want to show up in the minds of the people you want to impact in a certain way, my question is, what experiences are you providing? Are you adding value? And if you are somebody who wants to be known as the person who's great at community development and building communities, what advice and guidance are you offering people so that they see you as a thought leader in that space? So I know there's a lot to unpack here and I'm getting various questions and some of the questions I'm getting asked is, can you rebrand yourself? So after listening to this, I realized that maybe the perception of me, because I say everything you do and say communicates, right? Everything you do and say communicates. Think about Tiger Woods for a moment. Do you think of Tiger Woods mugshot or do you think of Tiger Woods winning the US Open? What do you think of? And of course, it's not the US Open, it's winning the Masters. You see, I made a little mistake there. I just carried on. I corrected myself. I was calm, <laughs> right? And that's one thing I do say when I'm talking to speakers and trainers is if you fluff, just correct yourself. But yes, do you think of Tiger Woods mugshot or winning the Masters? Well, some people think about winning and some people think about the mugshot. Well, I think about both because your brand is a combination of everything you do and say. So can you rebrand yourself? Yes, you can. But there's a but here. And the but is, are you doing it consistently? So if you have shown up in the minds of the people you impact as, let's say, not being a team player and not providing the experiences that make you a team player, how do you rebrand yourself as somebody who does cooperate and collaborate? You can't walk around with a t-shirt that says, hello, now I'm a team player. It doesn't work like that. You have to provide consistent behavior that reinforces the new impression, image, perception, reputation you want to create. Now, you can say to people, I'm working really hard at something you've been given feedback on. But you can't say, if you're always late for a meeting, I'm working really hard at being on time and then show up late after three times. So the key to rebranding is the consistency. So that's why I say every organization should make the program around what is my brand? How do I want to show up compulsory? Because it means that we're intentional. We make a decision about how we want to show up and it creates a level of awareness that says, is the way I am behaving contributing positively to my reputation? So any questions from you, Alan, at this point, that was a question I got. I'm going to bring Alan in to see if there are other questions. Another question I get asked often is, do I have to be phony then? Okay, that's a question that, I get asked. <laughs> that was one I would I was going to bring up was do I have to be phony or be on all the time? Is is 
one that thank you and i see that one of our listeners has asked us that question now you may be listening to this live or you may be listening to our recording please if you do have questions don't forget to go on to nadiaspeaks.com you can send me a question there as well but we always want to be authentic we always want to have a sense of i believe you i trust you but that doesn't mean you aren't aware so there's a difference between being self-aware and being self-conscious and false. So I am not saying you become another person. What I am suggesting is you become a conscious, mindful person, that you aren't one of those people who reacts to a situation, Alan, and then afterwards says, I could have behaved differently. Why didn't I handle it differently? And that's why, Alan, this is really one of my flagship programs in a variety of industries from high-end car manufacturings to do-it-yourself stores to beverages to food companies, industries, because every individual from leadership to entry-level position needs to say, when I think about my career, how do I want to show up? It's so interesting because I do this often with entry-level people or even sometimes internship programs where people think it's all about them. So let's say a mentee-mentor relationship. I might be the mentee, but I still want to be able to say, how am I showing up in the minds of the people I want to impact? Am I just being a go-getter or am I also being a go-giver? Mm -hmm. So these are all questions that come into when I think about my career, how do I want to show up? And Harvey Coleman came up with the concept of pie, right? Pie is performance, image, and exposure your brand, how you show up in the minds of the people you impact is in fact a combination of your actual technical capabilities. So I'll take Alan, for example. Alan and I have a journey of working together. So is he going to technically perform? But then where's image? Is he pleasant? Is he available? Is he easy to work with? Does he give me great suggestions? And then the other part of your overall brand is exposure, who knows about you. So I know I've given you a lot of information today <laughs> and uh, think about performance, image and exposure. But I do want everybody to understand that everything you do and say communicates and that your brand, how you show up is determined by you every day, every moment, every interaction. And yes, you have to be authentic, but authentic can also be you practice the concept of pause. Pause means before I respond, before I react, I think about this. And I have two daughters, uh, one is in her 30s, one is in her late 20s. And I've spent my life trying to say, dealing with conflict is such an essential part of your overall brand. And simply being reactive without thought is dangerous. So if we can learn to think about the following, if we can learn to think about our brand as our reputation, it's what comes to mind when people think about you, fill in your name. What comes to mind when people think about you? And then are you providing the experiences to reinforce that? So thank you, Alan, my wingman producer, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to all of you. My website is nadiaspeaks.com. I think I'll end today's podcast on the concept of what it means to own your space, which is how do you give yourself permission as part of your brand to be comfortable and competent? Good to see you soon. So what does it mean to own your space? So Own Your Space, which is my book, keynotes, workshops, is all around giving yourself permission to be the person presenting information. If you are giving a sales presentation or you are being interviewed for a new position, do you own your space? Do you look comfortable? Do you look confident? Do you come across both confidently and competently? And in owning your space, you need to understand the verbal and non-verbal elements of your physical space. In other words, what you say, but equally important is how you say it. 
and then we look at your virtual owning your space. Is your LinkedIn profile complete? Do you have a good picture of yourself? Think about owning your podium when you give a presentation. Do you look comfortable? Do you look commanding? So these are just some of the topics that I cover in Own Your Space. And I ask you to really think about, do you maximize the overall way you project yourself in every interaction? Because if you do, you are truly owning your space.